It's time to take a look at the wiring for my cafe racer. I put on the original wire harness here, or should I say the cable spaghetti? It should be possible to just put it all inside the headlight housing with some persuasion. Yeah, it seems to be possible, but stop. It has to be a better solution to this. Let me rewind and try another approach. My bike has the typical electrical components you find on any classic bike from this era. Let's start with the lights. It has a parking light, which also turns on the rear light, low beam, high beam, turn signals on both sides, and the brake light. For this, I really only need five wires to the headlight and four wires to the rear lights, in addition to a ground wire. Okay, that was the lights. Then let me show you the controls on the handlebar, which of course also needs to be wired up. Normally you find the ignition switch here. I decided to remove it to get the look I was after. It will actually be replaced with a keyless solution. More about that later. I will not be using the original dashboard either. I have replaced it with a smaller one, but I need to find the solution for the indicator lights. Neutral, turn signal, high beam and for the oil pressure warning light. The small speedometer I have found has none of these. I have also decided to replace both the right and left side uh, handlebars. The main reason is this. The clutch lever is very worn and the paint on this handlebar is heavily faded. The handlebar on the right side is in very good condition. I think it must have been replaced by the previous owner. However, they will both be replaced with the aftermarket parts and uh, I will try to achieve a more minimalistic look. The cables from the front light and the handlebar controls follows the frame backwards to the seat tray, where the most of the electrical parts will stay. And I have quite a lot of space here. Here you can see the regulator rectifier, the solenoid, the fuse box and the turn signal relay. Which, by the way, I need to replace since I have switched to LED lights. And I have still plenty of space here, but of course one important part is missing. The battery. Well, yes. It seems to be no problem to find space for it, but of course I cannot use this old-fashioned LED battery. So I will have to find a lithium battery that is less than 5 cm 2 inches tall. Instead of having all these cables and connectors in the headlight housing, I will reroute most of them to go from the headlight and from the handlebar controls directly to the seat tray. It's time to take a look at the wiring diagram. I will have to do some modifications to the wiring since I plan to fit a new handlebar button controls and a keyless ignition. It's just to figure out how. If you're watching this video on your mobile phone, this will not be easy for you to see. But don't worry, I will not dive into the details here anyway. It's just one thing to say about this diagram. It's a perfect representation of the spaghetti cabling. This looks way more complex than it actually is. Perhaps it's done this way for a reason. Okay, I can simplify it. I will not do any changes to the wiring for the engine ignition system or for the battery charging. This includes the cables from the coil to the CDI unit to the stator inside the engine. Here is also the alternator connected to the regulator rectifier. You can see here that uh, this is more or less a separate cabling and I will more or less keep it as is. The connectors are quite huge and the cables are a bit long. This should be easy to tidy up. Removing this part from the diagram should help. And then I can focus on the remaining cables. It did not help much. It's still quite a lot of cabling left here. Let me show you an example of the madness. This is how the headlight high or low beam are powered. Let me start from the battery. The current has to flow through the main fuse, then through a connector and then to the ignition switch. Then it's uh, three more connectors before it goes to the main light switch and then all the way back to the headlight fuse. Now it goes to the high low beam handlebar switch, again passing several connectors before finally reaching the headlight bulb. The current also uh, flows through the ground cable, passing uh, four connectors on its way before it ends to the ground connector. In other words, the current flowing through the light bulb 
will most likely be heavily reduced, causing a poor light beam. It has to flow a very long distance through multiple fuses, connectors and switches, all acting like resistors along the way. I guess you've already noticed that I'm not very happy with this original wiring. And because of this, I have decided to make my own. And I think I've come up with a wiring diagram that is easy to understand, uses very few cables and connectors, and I hope it will be much more efficient than the original one. In my diagram, the top part represents the front of the bike, showing the front light uh, topmost, and the bottom part is uh, the rear of the bike. These uh, are the controls on the handlebar, and uh, these are the parts that will be located in the seat tray. And then the fun part. You might already have noticed that in the middle of the diagram there is a front and a rear computer, with some wiring in between. The front computer has a display and it enables the keyless ignition. It receives input signals from all the handlebar controls and sends it to the rear computer through a communication cable. The rear computer takes care of delivering current to all of the bike's components through a relay. It's just one problem with this. This computer does not exist. Well, that is not going to stop me, so I will build my own. Okay, calm down, calm down. I know some of you will say that uh, you can buy products like this today. And sure, there are some uh, commercial available products that helps with your wiring and have a lot of these uh, functions that I am uh, looking for. But um, yeah, and the most popular one is probably the M unit from Moto Gadget in uh, Germany. It will probably be a much safer way to go that route. But um, I find them quite expensive. At least they don't fit into my budget build. And um, I have some uh, features I'm looking for that I can't find from any of these uh, commercial available products. So what I will do and what I've started on is to build my own computer. It's based on microcontrollers. Let me show you what I've done so far. What you see here is on uh, this side is the unit that goes on the handlebar. And on this side is the unit that goes in the seat tray. I have currently two relays. I have ordered eight more, uh, so I will have 10 in total connected to this small microcontroller. The handlebar unit is uh, attached to these uh, buttons that uh, simulates the buttons I will have on my handlebar. And it's uh, attached to the display. When I ordered this display, I didn't really know it was this small. So I bought a bigger one. Here, let me show you. But uh, this one might be too big, so maybe I have to order a third one. Let's see uh, how it goes. Anyway, I will be using uh, the small display for now. Uh, let me power it on and see how it looks like. Of course, I had to make a splash screen on the boot up sequence. By the way, I will call this project Control MC, at least as a working title. First, let me explain this control system. To the left is the clutch lever, then the turn signals, high-low beam, then it's the multifunction display menu buttons, start-stop button, and all the way to the right, the brake lever. None of these buttons work now because the ignition is off, except one specific button, which I have programmed to start the password check. This is my keyless uh, solution. So when you see this symbol, you can enter the password you have set up in the system. Now the ignition is turned on and the display is showing you the status page. Let's uh, test the turn signals. And here you can see the relay in action. The handlebar unit is now sending the signal to the relay unit, which is triggering the relays on and off. Let's try the other side. Yes. Working well. I also selected to show the indication symbol with a large icon. I also added a hazard option just for fun because I could. Not sure how useful it is. High low beam button is also working, triggering this flashing by the of the headlights. Let's go into the menu. Uh, here I can turn on the lights. Let's go through park and then low lights, and then you can turn on the high beam and low beam. 
So uh, this is more or less how it's uh, all working. And if you go into the menu and wait for a while, the system will automatically go back to the status page, which will be the place where you live when you drive with large icons. Let me show you how to turn off the bike. Use the menu selector, go past the light settings, then to the ignition settings and then select to turn off. The bike will be powered down and then all the buttons will be non-responsive until you select to turn the ignition back on. And this is just some of the features I have built and uh, I plan to build. It's just incredible what these small microcontrollers can do. Then I got this thought, okay, I'm building this for my bike, for my needs, but I'm also building it so it can be configured to be used for uh, other bikes, not necessarily for Honda bikes either, because this is quite universal. Do you think this could be something that others could have uh, taken advantage of? Anyway, I have started this as an open source project. That means I have a web page uh, in GitHub where I'm publishing all the code and all the instructions. It's not complete yet, but uh, I'm continuously uh, adding all, everything I do to this uh, site. So anyone can download it, take a look at it and even contribute if they would like to. If you know somebody who is both a Arduino uh, developer, and motorcycle enthusiast like me, maybe you can send them a message, ask them to check it out. It would be nice if you can have a small community of people that could contribute to this project. And maybe we can end up with a solution that is affordable and um, configurable and suitable for uh, any need, because there is a lot of equipment you can attach to this GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, all kinds of sensors. For instance, this small one, I'm going to attach a temperature sensor, uh, humidity and temperature. It's nice to have. Um, yeah, anyway, and the, the cost, let me show you. This isn't very expensive. These are the aftermarket parts I'm going to buy to attach to my handlebar. It's very affordable prices for this. And, uh, you can see the button. I will try to 3D print something there. If that doesn't work, it's also possible to buy a complete set of uh, buttons to put on your handlebar. And when it comes to electronics, also quite affordable. It's a lot of different kind of uh, microcontrollers and equipment you can buy. But all in all, all the hardware and the electronics, around $100 uh, or more. It depends what you buy, of course. So affordable, flexible, and maybe this can be something. So contact me on Instagram or check out the webpage, check the description for more info. Maybe this can be big. Thank you for watching.